Hello and welcome to this GCSE chemistry video about the structure and bonding of carbon focusing in on diamond, graphite, graphene and fullerenes concentrating on their structure, bonding, properties and uses. Most of the structures of carbon are giant covalent structures and so I want to look at some general properties that they share before we look at individual examples. These are called giant structures because they're made up of a huge number of atoms. And they are giant covalent structures because those atoms are held together by a large number of strong covalent bonds. Examples of giant covalent structures include silicon dioxide, sometimes referred to as silica, which is the main component of sand and many rocks. And it's the one giant covalent structure that you need to know about that is not made from carbon. Also, we have got graphite and diamond. Both of these last two are giant covalent structures made from carbon. The atoms in a giant covalent structure are arranged in a giant lattice. And giant, again, is referring to the huge number of atoms, and the lattice is referring to a regular repeating pattern within the covalent structure. In this giant lattice, each atom is bonded to several others in an extensive network. When we get to the edges of our diagram, it isn't always obvious that this does continue, but you need to know that when you see a diagram like this, you are just seeing a small snapshot of a larger structure. As a result of this giant covalent lattice, the structures themselves are very strong and very stable. Substances that consist of giant covalent structures are solids at room temperature because they have a very high melting point. Giant covalent structures are not made up of molecules, but a huge number of atoms in a repeating pattern. All of the atoms in these structures are linked to other atoms by strong covalent bonds. And these bonds must be overcome in order to melt or boil these substances. And since these bonds are very, very strong, and there is a huge number of them, lots of energy is required to break them all, which is why giant covalent structures have such a high melting point. As well as being able to explain the very high melting point of giant covalent structures, you need to be able to recognise them from diagrams showing their structure and bonding. Carbon is the backbone of life on Earth, forming the basis of all essential biomolecules. Its unique ability to form stable bonds with many elements, including itself, allows for the diversity of organic compounds. Carbon in the periodic table is shown with its symbol, capital C, its mass number and its atomic number. The atomic number is 6, which means that it has 6 protons in its nucleus and 6 electrons in its shells. The electronic structure is 2,4, which means it has 2 electrons in its first shell, which is then full, and 4 electrons in its outermost occupied shell, or energy level, we might call it. Understanding carbon's various structures, such as in diamond, graphite, graphene and fullerenes, is crucial for grasping its role in both biological systems and industrial applications. You need to be able to recognise these structures from diagrams, explain their structure and bonding, and link this to their properties and their uses. To understand the properties of diamond, we first need to know about its structure and bonding. Diamond is made of the element carbon, and only carbon. And since there aren't any other elements involved, the formula for diamond is actually just a capital C. In a diagram of diamond, the carbon atoms are usually represented as black circles, and there are sticks coming out of these circles, and these sticks are representing covalent bonds connecting the carbon atoms together. And covalent bonds, remember, are shared pairs of electrons that hold the carbon atoms in place. 
The structure of diamond contains a huge number of carbon atoms in a giant covalent structure, sometimes referred to as a lattice, which is a generic phrase which just means a regular repeating pattern. On this occasion, that repeating pattern is a tetrahedral shape around each atom of carbon. I'm just showing a small section of a larger lattice here, but this would of course continue in three dimensions and probably cover billions and billions of atoms of carbon. As you can see from the diagram, each carbon atom is forming four covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. And to do this, it uses all four of the electrons in its outer shell, combining with one electron each from each of the four carbon atoms that each atom is bonded to, and this gives every carbon atom eight electrons in total. You might think that the carbon atoms at the edge of my picture don't have four bonds, and that's just simply because we have to end the diagram somewhere. These atoms do have four bonds. The diagram would just look a bit messy if we were to show all of them. There are three properties of diamond that you need to know about, and each of them is caused by the structure and bonding of diamond. First of all, diamond is a very hard substance, meaning it resists being deformed and its surface can withstand penetration, abrasion and scratching. And the reason that diamond has this property is due to its giant structure, where each carbon atom forms four strong covalent bonds to other carbon atoms. And these bonds are difficult to break and this requires a lot of energy to break them. And so as a result, no carbon atoms can move in this rigid three-dimensional tetrahedral structure. The second property is that diamond does not conduct electricity. And this is because it has four covalent bonds per carbon atom in the structure. And each covalent bond is made up of a shared pair of electrons. And so each carbon atom uses up all of its outer shell electrons, those valent electrons. They are all used in bonding. And so as a result of this, there are no delocalized electrons to move through the structure and carry charge. And so diamond does not conduct electricity. And the third and final property of diamond is that it has a very high melting point. Unlike for simple molecules, where you need to overcome the forces between molecules, giant structures contain a large number of covalent bonds, and you need to break this huge number of covalent bonds in order to separate out the atoms. And covalent bonds are very, very strong, and so a lot of energy is required to break them, and you only have enough energy to break them at high temperatures, hence the high melting point. Graphite is a giant covalent structure, meaning it's made up of a huge number of carbon atoms in a repeating pattern. Each carbon atom, shown as a black circle in my diagram, forms three covalent bonds, which are the black lines, to three other carbon atoms in this structure, resulting in layers of hexagonal rings. Remember, Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell, and it only uses three of them to form each of the covalent bonds. And so as a result of that, one electron per carbon atom is delocalized, meaning this electron isn't in a fixed position and can move through the structure, similar to in metals. In this structure, you can see that there aren't any covalent bonds between the layers. There are no black lines anywhere between these layers of hexagons. But what there are is weak intermolecular forces, and these forces hold the layers together. And sometimes they aren't shown on diagrams, but I'm doing so here, showing those intermolecular forces as purple dashed lines. Do remember that these layers continue off in both directions, and so the intermolecular forces do as well. And there are also going to be more than three layers, but I'm just showing a portion of graphite structure here. The structure and bonding of graphite gives rise to three important properties that gives graphite some of its uses. 
First of all, graphite is soft and slippery, which enables it to act as a lubricant and reduce friction. The reason that graphite has this property is down to its layered structure of interlocking hexagonal rings. There are only weak intermolecular forces between these layers, so this means weak forces of attraction and no covalent bonding. And therefore, the layers can slide over each other and separate. This also makes graphite really useful in pencils for making a mark on paper. When you use it in this way, you are literally rubbing or breaking off a layer of the graphite onto the paper. Graphite also has the property of being able to conduct electricity, which allows it to be used in electrolysis as the inert electrodes. In the structure of graphite, there are only three covalent bonds per carbon atom, and carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. And so one electron per carbon atom is delocalized, which means it isn't held in a particular position, and so it can move through the structure carrying electrical charge, because electrons themselves are negatively charged, remember. The final property of graphite is that it has a very high melting point, similar to diamond and other giant covalent structures, for the similar reasons. And the reasons are that there are a very large number of covalent bonds between carbon atoms that need to be broken in order to separate out the atoms. And covalent bonds are very strong, and so they require a lot of energy to break them, and you only have enough energy to break those bonds at a high temperature, hence the high melting point. Graphene is a giant covalent structure made up of a single layer of graphite. And you can see that it looks similar to graphite, we've still got one layer of hexagonal rings. And like graphite, there are three covalent bonds for each carbon atom, and therefore one delocalized electron per carbon atom. Graphene shares some of the properties of graphite, and these properties make it useful in applications such as electronics, and this is because graphene contains delocalized electrons, which are free to move through the structure and carry charge. Graphene is also useful in composite materials due to the enhanced mechanical strength, lightweight nature and durability that it brings, and this is down to the strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms. Fullerenes are molecules of carbon atoms with hollow shapes. Commonly, the structure of fullerenes is based on hexagonal rings, but they could also be rings of five or seven carbon atoms. The first fullerene to be discovered, and the one you're most likely to need to recognise, is called C60 Buckminster fullerene, or sometimes just simply Buckminster fullerene. The C60 part of its name refers to the fact that there are 60 carbon atoms connected by covalent bonds to make the structure of the ball shape. And you can see from the diagram that we have a series of repeating pentagons and hexagons in a pattern that is very similar to the stitching patterns of the shapes on a typical football. Spherical fullerenes like C60, and there's also C70 fullerene as well, have a number of different applications linked to their shape. First of all, they're used in medicine for drug delivery. And this is because these fullerenes are hollow, and so they can act as a cage and trap the drug inside as they move around the body. In addition, these fullerenes are unreactive and non-toxic, and so they won't cause harm to people. Another use of this type of fullerene is as catalysts. They have a very large surface area to volume ratio, and so that means you don't need to use large quantities of this substance to provide a large surface area. And finally, this type of fullerene is useful as lubricants. Because of the spherical shape of these fullerenes, they will roll around and reduce friction. Carbon nanotubes are a cylindrical type of fullerene, and as their name suggests, they are very small. In fact, around 1 to 100 nanometers across. And they are made up of a few hundred atoms in a hollow tube arrangement, and the nanotube will either be open at one end 
or at both. And so as a result of this, they will allow tiny amounts of fluids and materials to pass through them. Carbon nanotubes have very high length to diameter ratios, since each tube has a very narrow diameter. Their properties make them useful for a variety of things. As a few examples, they are useful in nanotechnology due to their large surface area to volume ratio. Carbon nanotubes can also be used in electronics to make very small components. The carbon atoms in the nanotubes have three covalent bonds to other carbon atoms each, and so as a result, each carbon atom has one delocalized electron. And this means that inside the carbon nanotube, there is a sea of delocalized electrons which are free to move through the structure and carry charge. Carbon nanotubes are also useful in materials such as building materials and badminton rackets because they enhance the properties of the material, particularly their stiffness and their strength.